concepts and theories are basic products of social science research. When you read a research article the first time or hear a, a theory the first time, it might be difficult to understand what that article or what that theory is about unless you understand what the concepts that the article or theory addresses are. For this reason, it is very important to be able to identify the key concepts in an article and also find the definitions for those concepts. Sometimes the definition is provided by article, sometimes it is assumed to be common knowledge, sometimes you need to go elsewhere to look for a definition. Without understanding how the concepts are defined in an article, it is very difficult to understand what the article actually is about. Let's start by looking at what this theory is. Sometimes theory is sort of being opposite of practice. But in social sciences and in science more generally, theory has a more specific meaning. So theory is a set of connected statements about causal relationships between concepts. And uh, importantly, theory does not simply state that X causes Y, but the theory also explains the causal process. How, when and why X causes Y. For example, we could have a proposition which is a, a basic causal claim within a theory that innovativeness causes companies to be more successful. Then to have a theory to support that proposition, we would have to explain the different causal pathways or the different mechanisms uh, through which innovativeness causes companies to be more successful. For example, we could say that innovativeness allows companies to come up with better products, better products allow them to uh, capture more market share and that allows them to grow and be more profitable. We could also say that innovativeness allows them to uh, have improved processes, less scrap, more efficiency, therefore lower costs and more profitability. So that kind of how, when and why explanation is required for a theory along with the proposition which states the, uh, the key causal relationship that the theory is about. Quite often theories contain multiple propositions. So we might have, for example, uh, a theory that early international expansion leads to growth, but it also leads to a uh, higher risk of failure. Now, let's take a look at concepts. And our example article is by Harry Sapiens and co-authors from 2006 in Academic Management Review, which is an article, a journal that publishes only non-empirical articles. So a non-empirical article is an article that advances some kind of theoretical argument or pre presents some kind of theory, but does not present any evidence backing that theory. So this kind of articles present a new idea, but don't necessarily test the idea. So let's take a look at the theory of this paper and how we can make sense of this paper. Of course, you can start reading the paper from the first line and proceed like you would read a novel from the beginning to the end and hope that you will understand it as you go. But that's not the most efficient way of trying to understand or more effective, more most efficient and effective way of understanding an article. It's better to first skim through the article to get an idea of what the article is about and then try to identify the key concepts. What you're basically looking for when you evaluate the, an article that presents a theory is something like this. So this article presents a graphical summary of all the propositions. So each of these propositions, there are eight in total, is a, a causal claim that the art article also explains. Once you start to read an article, the first thing that you need to understand or identify is what are the key concepts and then how are they defined. It's pretty obvious that because each of these box presents a concept, these boxes at least should be considered the key concepts. And once we have the key concepts, we need to identify how are the concepts causally related. So these, each of these arrows presents a proposition which corresponds to a causal, which is basically a causal statement. So the article says that if once you decide to go international, that actually decreases the probability of firm survival. And then the article contains an explanation of why that is so. But that's not the only place 
where you find these concepts. You need to also look at the concepts within the arrows. So the arrows present the causal mechanism. And you need to look at the why. Why do these arrows exist? What kind of concepts are used to explain the mechanisms that there are in these arrows? And then once you have identified all the concepts, you need to understand what the concepts are about. So if we just look at these boxes, six boxes here, probably the firm survival, we understand survival means not dying. Uh, growing means getting bigger. That's pretty easy to understand. Age, pretty easy to understand. Experience, we have an intuitive understanding of what experience means. But what is research fungibility? So uh, how do we define research fungibility? What, that, what is the meaning of this term? And also the, uh, the theory part, the part that explains the logic behind these arrows contains concepts such as dynamic capabilities and imprinting. If we go and uh, ask any person at the university, what is dynamic capabilities, what is imprinting, what is fungibility, and if that person is not familiar with this literature, they pr have probably no idea. But to understand this paper, you need to understand these terms. So how do we know what these terms mean? Quite often, once you have identified the key terms, you can start looking for definitions in the article. So this is a good article and the, it presents definitions. For example, here is the definition of dynamic capabilities. It stated that dynamic capabilities are organizational strategic and strategic routines by which firm managers alter firm's resource base through acquiring, shedding, integrating, recombining resources to generate new value, value creating strategies. And uh, well, a dynamic capability is a special kind of capability, so it's, it's worth also defining what the capability is and uh, how dynamic capabilities differ from other kinds of capabilities. So based on this description, we can uh, understand a dynamic capability, something that allows firms to, uh, to develop new capabilities or reconfigure existing capabilities. So a dynamic capability is basically uh, the capability of a firm to adapt to its environment or create new things. If we want to know more, there is citation to Eisenhardt and Martin's article from which this, this definition comes from. So quite often when an article presents a concept, and it presents a definition, if that article is not the first one to come up with that concept and a definition, they will cite the source or the original source of that concept. So dynamic capabilities was not, uh, or capability was not introduced, the term was not introduced by Eisenhower and Martin, but this definition that this article by Sapiens applies comes from that article. So sometimes we, we change the definition of a concept because we have realized that they are how we use the concept is actually evolved or we realize that the existing definition was too imprecise. It was uh, easy to misunderstand or something and then we need to redefine it. Just that everyone has a shared vocabulary and that we understand what we are talking about and both the reader and the author can have the shared meaning for the same concept. And um, if we want to know more about capabilities, this article points to Nelson and Winter's book, and, and that's uh, a book length treatment of what routines and capabilities are for those who are more interested. Of course, if you're just looking at this article as a part of a coursework or part of a larger review, you probably don't want to go to these original sources, but it's nice to have them available in case you, for example, want to write a dissertation about dynamic capabilities. Here we have a definition of uh, imprinting, so it comes from Hanan and, and Fitzcombe's work and the idea of imprinting is that it is something, uh, it is a process through which something that happens early on in a life cycle has lasting consequences. How would you know what imprinting means? Well, you can look for this definition or you can perhaps put the term in Google. Maybe you have seen the term imprinting used in different contexts. But generally, when you uh, see a term used the first time in an article, there is a, there is a definition for it or at least the definition can be found somewhere near the first use of the term. For example, if uh, uh, the introduction states that there is imprinting involved, 
then the definition of imprinting might be in the theory part that follows the introduction that explains the imprinting process in more detail. Then we have the uh, definition for fungibility. It uh, relates to uh, whether uh, resources can be used for different purposes. And uh, once we understand what these concepts are about, then it's a lot simpler to understand what the actual theory is about. So when you read an article, you, you need to identify the concepts, you need to identify the, the uh, definitions, and then you can understand. What if a concept is not defined? For example, this article uses uh, the, the term resource endow endowment, which it does not present the definition for. Well, we need to first consider, is that the central concept? The answer to this question is no. We don't need to know what is the exact definition of what resource endowment means. But if we have no idea what endowment is, we can simply look at the dictionary definition. So put it in Google and you'll find a definition. An endowment is something that you initially have or possess. So, so resource endowment could be understood as what your initial resources are in a company. Of course, dictionary definitions are not always the same as the definitions used in social science research and sometimes uh, the same term is applied with different definitions in different fields or different contexts. But if you simply want to understand the argument of a paper and the concept is not central to that paper, then dictionary definitions are good enough for you. So you should not shy away from putting things to Google and, and checking the definitions and try to understand it that way. If you understand the detailing correctly, it does not really make a difference for your understanding of the main idea of the paper. So how do you evaluate articles? How do you understand theory and how do you understand non-empirical papers? First of all, you need to identify the uh, key concepts. Quite often the key concepts are presented in the boxes and arrows like this. So boxes are the concepts, arrows are the propositions that are state the, uh, the claimed causal relationships. If an article does not present such a graphic or such a figure as this one, then I quite often myself draw a figure myself. So an article that presents theory quite often has propositions. And propositions are, are in the form x causes y. So I will put all the x's in boxes, all the y's in boxes, and connect the x's and y's using arrows. And I'll, I'll draw this kind of figure based on what the paper writes. And uh, that helps. Then I start looking at, okay, so what is fungibility? I go, I go through the central concepts. Typically there are a few, maybe 10, maybe less, maybe a bit more. And importantly, not all concepts are central. For example, resource endowment is not something that you need to really understand to understand this theory. Then uh, you need to look at the boxes and the explanation of the arrow. Once you have the list of the key, key concepts, then you start looking at the definitions, what those definitions are. And uh, often found in the article, underline the key definitions. If you can't find it in the article, you open the article, you type the concept in, in the PDF search. If you still can't find a definition, then uh, put it in Google. Sometimes the concept like age is common knowledge and it does not need to be defined. Once you have identified the key concepts and their definitions, then you read the article. So once you understand what imprinting is, then you are in the position to, to read and understand why imprinting would have an effect on, for example, a probability of, of firm growth. 